The Artboard tool in Affinity Designer allows you to create custom, versatile design areas within your document. They are hugely flexible and a useful part of Designer, so let's look into how they work. If we start with the example I have here, this has been created with multiple artboards spread throughout my document in order to show off my different design variations and to let me easily view these all at the same time. To create something similar to the layout we have here, let's first start by creating a new document by going to File and New Document or with the keyboard shortcut Command N on Mac or Control N on Windows. Now we can choose from a range of different preset sizes available to us, which are conveniently split into these handy groups too. For this example, let's go with A4, as I'm intending to change the sizing within the actual document. But the important thing to notice here is this Create Artboard button we have at the bottom. This allows us to start our document with an artboard enabled instead of the canvas setup, which we have by default. Let's keep this unticked and look at how we can create an artboard in the document using the dedicated artboard tool instead. So let's select the artboard tool from the tools panel on the left, and now our context toolbar changes to give us some additional options. We can select the size based on our current document dimensions, or we can opt for selection. This is very handy if we wanted to quickly convert a selected object into a dedicated artboard area instead. Let's go with document in this case and select insert artboard. You'll notice that the background area color has changed indicating that we're now working with artboards instead. This gray level can be adjusted in the preferences panel under the user interface section, allowing you to customize it to your preferred level. But now we have this artboard, I'll show you a few ways you can customize and interact with it. But before I do that, I'm going to copy across a logo from my previous example using Command C on Mac, Control C on Windows, and I'll paste it into this new artboard with Command V on Mac or Control V on Windows. With the Move tool selected, we can make adjustments to the artboard dimensions in a few ways. We can use the adjustment handles and combine them with keyboard modifiers shown on the hint line at the bottom of your workspace or we can head over to the transform panel and enter specific dimensions instead. I'm also going to enable snapping to help me keep this icon nicely centralized in my artboard. The next thing I'm going to do is to duplicate this artboard using option click and drag so we can quickly create some variations of this logo. To navigate to this specific ellipse I want to change, let's use the shortcut Control Command left click on Mac or Control and right click on Windows. I'll change the colour over on the swatches panel and then I'll take the same steps again with this third artboard here. Now let's look at how objects clip inside the artboards themselves. If we click and drag to move this icon, you can see that it will eventually jump over to the second artboard instead. This is also indicated in our layer thumbnails as well. Generally speaking, this might be your preferred method of working, but from time to time you may want to restrict your work to one artboard at a time. You can do this by deselecting Edit All Layers at the bottom of the Layers panel. Now if we try to drag this object into the same place we did before, we can see that it remains hidden from view, but is still positioned within our original first artboard. So in this case, I'll just undo that step and keep this in its original location. Now let's refer back to my first document and look at a few things we can do on here. Renaming your layers is a great way to stay organised. You can easily do this by selecting the layer and then by double-clicking the layer name. Let's call this one iPhone Mockup and press Return or Enter. One last thing I'd like to highlight is how you can resize and adjust multiple artboards at the same time. So firstly, let's use the Move tool to select everything at once. And now if we resize using this corner handle, you'll notice our non-expanded text does not scale with the rest of our objects. So alternatively, if we resize using this lower right handle, our text and expanded objects will resize to scale too. Another very useful option is to enable lock children along with transform objects separately, both of these found in the context toolbar. This enables us to resize all of our artboards while making sure any objects inside of them remain in the correct place. And we can even use the transform panel again to enter our specific dimensions, as well as enabling the link option to make sure any width and height adjustments are changed proportionally. So that was a run through of some of the artboard features in Affinity Designer and some of the ways you might use them in your design work. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.